Hey guys, this is Matt with 4hydroponics.com and today we're going to be mixing up a batch of Culture Solutions Nutrients. So today we're going to be mixing up a batch of flowering nutrients, uh, actually right around mid-weeks flower for our tomatoes that we're growing in our greenhouse. Um, they're in the deep water culture uh, system that Current Culture makes, and so we're running their nutrients. Um, and uh, the chart that we're going to be using that I'm going to be going off of is on the back of their bottles. Um, on every bottle that you buy, they have a chart that has everything you need to run their line. Um, but if you want to get more in-depth, you can go to their website and they have some really, really uh, in-depth nutrient charts that you can manipulate by adding how much air you're going to be pumping into the system, to your water quality, to your uh, how many weeks you're going to be intending to run the system, and they can get really in-depth with it. So I encourage you to go check out their website if they want to get really into it. Otherwise, the chart on the back is really running the lot, right in the middle, right in the center, and it works great for us. Um, so uh, first things first, we want to talk about is water quality. Um, water quality is a huge part of the mixing process. It's going to determine what you add, how much you add, um, and that also depending on what nutrients you're adding and what the order you're adding them in. So RO water is what we're starting with here. That's reverse osmosis water. The filters that run, uh, that make re reverse osmosis water are relatively expensive, so you should know if you're already using one or not. If you're not using one, you want to check your water quality with a parts per million meter. Um, anything over three to 400 parts per million is what we consider hard water. If you're running hard water, you're going to really want to think about investing in a water filter. Um, it doesn't leave a lot of room for nutrients, um, and it also can build, cause buildup issues and pH issues. Um, so it's something to think about. They do make a handful of lines on the market that are specifically designed for hard water, which basically make room for your hard water. But ideally, we would run a filter and get that water a little bit uh, cleaner. Um, now, dechlorinated uh, tap water, which a lot of people are using like a small boy filter or some kind of filter that's not RO, but it is taking some of the nutrients out of the water and some of the sediment out of the water, and we're running between 150, 250 parts per million. That's a good starting water. If you're running with that water, you don't necessarily need to add CalMag back to it to get it to start, but you still might want to add a little CalMag just depending on what you're gardening and uh, your, your preferences. If we're using RO water, we absolutely need to add CalMag uh, back to it. It has nothing in it. It's zero, zero parts per million. It's pure water, which is good, but uh, there's some beneficial stuff in there that we took out, and we need to get it back in there, and we need to remineralize re our water. So we're going to use a simple battle bottle of CalMag for that. Um, today we're going to use Botanicare's CalMag. Um, there's tons of CalMag products in the market, Cali Magic, MagiCal, a lot of different companies make one. Uh, any of them will do. You might find your personal preference. Some have higher nitrogen, some have lower nitrogen. This one's got two nitrogen in it. Some people like a lower nitrogen because they're using it in flour. They don't want that extra little bit of nitrogen. So something to keep in mind when you're choosing a CalMag to re-mineralize uh, your RO water. To remineralize your water, I recommend anywhere from three to five mils a gallon to get your water anywhere from about 150 to 250 parts per million of CalMag. So I uh, recommend always giving your bottle a shake in case anything's settled on there and just good practice. Um, after you've given your bottle a shake, um, we're gonna use this nifty little shot glass here to do the majority of our measuring today. They make larger ones for larger volumes of water that are full-size glasses. They make graduated cylinders and beakers and everything else that you can think of. Um, but this shot glass has done me really well for a long time. It does milliliters, ounces, teaspoons, and tablespoons, which is the majority of what you're gonna run into when you're looking at different bottles from different companies you'll be able to get it all done with one shot glass pretty easily. Um, and then last but not least, um, silica. A lot of people use a lot of silica on their gardening, which is a good product. We've made videos on it. Check them out. Um, talks about what it does. But if you are adding a potassium silicate or a silicon dioxide or any kind of silicate to your water, you want to add it first and foremost, even before the CalMag. Um, that's because it's a very high pH, around anywhere from 8 to 11 pH coming out of the bottle. And if you add that to your water after you've got your micronutrients and macronutrients in there, it'll shock those nutrients out of solution and you'll end up with deficiencies that don't make a lot of sense. So once again, always add silica first. I'm not going to add any today because we're not using it in our system. Um, we haven't really needed it at the moment because the culture solution has got a really good amount of everything for us in there. Um, but if I was going to add it, I'd add it first. I'd give it a really, really good stir because I don't want any pockets of silica pockets of high pH in that water when I'm adding my rest of my nutrients. Um, and so I'm not using silica, so my first bottle is going to be CalMag today to uh, remineralize my RO water. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, about 5 mils per gallon. Um, we're doing 3 gallons of water, so 3 times 5 will be 15 mils. I'm going to use my trusty little uh, shot glass and we're going to measure up uh, 15 mils of the Botanicare CalMag. So I got my 15 mils, make sure it's even and steady, and then just go ahead and drop it in there. Now I'd recommend um, when you drop these in here, if you can, 
get a little bit of water into the shot glass and then pour it in. You kind of want to dilute that concentrate as you mix it if you can. Um, you can't always do that, but if you can, dilute it a little bit before it hits the actual bucket and that'll be uh, less of a shock down the line as you add nutrients. So once I've got my shot glass uh, rinsed out and my CalMag capped back up for no spills, take my stir stick, you can use any kind of stick you want. I like the bamboo sticks, so they seem to give me some good some good vortex action. And we're gonna make sure we give this a nice, really nice good stir a couple times back and forth to make sure that everything's nice and stirred up. Stirring's not a bad thing. Um, a lot of people like to use small submersible pumps, especially if you're mixing with organics. Um, a small, cheap submersible pump in your bucket or your reservoir could be really helpful. Um, a lot of people consider it a must. Um, but uh, I would say with organics, it's a really good idea. Synthetics seem to be so water soluble that I've had a need for the pumps. And the pumps can heat up the water a little bit, so keep that in mind as well. Um, and then again, with microbial life, it can chop them up a little too. So you might want to you know, pick your battles there with that. So next up we're going to do is the uh, Bloom A. The Bloom A, whenever you're using a two-part nutrient line, like you know your Canna A and B or your Flora Duo A and B, your A is going to have your micronutrients in it, and that's what's going to be your darker colored one. It's going to change the color of your water. Um, that's because if you're running a three-part line, you know it's micro, bloom, and grow. The micro has got all the color in it, and it's got your micronutrients. Well, when you're running a two-part line, it's always in your A. Um, and when you're running a two-part line, you're almost always going to run equal parts. There are some that vary a little bit, so you know maybe in flower you run a little more A than B or vice versa, but most two-part lines run pretty much equal parts through the majority of the run. So uh, on the back of our chart here, it says our midweek, which is going to go to the week four, um, is seven mils per gallon um, of uh, Bloom A. I have three gallons here, so seven times three is 21. Um, I'm always a fan of just being cautious and maybe doing exactly 20, just because this goes to 20. That one mil won't hurt you too much, but we also have pipe pads and things where you can get exactly 21 mils if you wanted to, um, but I think 20 is sufficient. So we're gonna go right to 20 here on our shot glass. Try not to spill, Oop, a bit on there. And now that you got uh, 20 mils, we're going to go ahead and add that. Once again, I'm going to scoop a little bit of water in there, as you can see. And that diluted my concentration. And uh, dilute it a little bit as you add it. It just keeps everything uh, nice and gentle as it adds to the water. I'm going to clean my shot glass out a little bit. And go ahead and uh, give this a nice good stir. And then we're gonna go to the uh, Bloom B next. Uh, like I said, Bloom B won't have much color to it. It'll be pretty much clear in color. Um, and we're gonna do equal parts. So once again, three gallons um, times seven mils per gallon. And we're at right around 20 mils. Once again, I'm going to try to get a little bit of water into my shot glass a couple times just to dilute it as I add it. Rinse it out and then uh, give it a good stir. Nothing wrong with giving it a really good stir. And then last but not least for this application, I'm going to be adding the uh, mid flower bud booster. They make an early and a late. This one's their zero nitrogen uh, bud booster. Um, and uh, we're gonna come in with five mils a gallon um, for week four flower. So uh, put this at 15 mils of the bud booster. So again, just get my trusty shot glass, get out 15 mils. And then once again, dilute it as it goes into the water. Clean the shot glass out. Cap your nutrients for less spill possibility. And then give it a stir. Now because I added, because uh, I'm using RO water, I added my CalMag first to remineralize it. I could have also added more CalMag at that moment to get the additional CalMag that I want for this flower mixture, but just so I can show you that you can add CalMag whenever you want. If you're using regular water, I'm gonna add a little bit more CalMag at the end here 
because uh, the first pit was just to get my water back to normal, but I want additional cow mag because my plants are gonna definitely need some at this point in their uh, life. So now I'm gonna go to the recommended dose, which is about three mils a gallon. So um, once again, three times three, we're only gonna do nine mils, round it up to 10, and it should be just right. So I've got 10 mils in there. I'm gonna dilute it as I throw it in there. Now, culture solutions also makes the product UC Roots. Um, it's a sterilization product. Um, this is just going to go in as a topper, and we added some UC Roots to the system just yesterday, so I'm going to leave it out for now. Um, but you could also add your UC Roots right now, which is a hydrochloric acid, which basically runs a sterile hydroponic system. I wouldn't recommend adding that for a soilless or soil medium because it would completely kill your microbes off. For, for a hydroponic system, it's a great additive to keep your system running completely clean. All right. So now that our water is sufficiently stirred, this is the next part of the process is a decent pH and parts per million meter. And uh, synthetic gardening parts per million is a great tool to quantify what you're doing. If you fed the plant a thousand parts per million and it responded well from it, then you'll know to feed that same plant a thousand parts per million at that stage in its life forever. And so not knowing what that is coming out to can be a tricky thing. Um, also, if my water level was a little high or low, this is gonna be a little stronger or a little less uh, strong than I want. So that's also good to know so that if you have an issue, you know that you were a little strong or a little bit low, and that might be the cause of the problem after that last res change. pH-wise, pH is very important for nutrient availability. If the pH is too far out of whack, um, higher than we'll say seven and lower than five five, you're gonna have some serious issues with the plants getting any of the nutrients that you just mix in here. They'll be in there, but the plant won't be able to get to them. So these are two things that we wanna test pretty much religiously. And, uh, and uh, when I do test, I do give them a little bit of a swirl because um, letting them sit stagnant will give you more of a uh, variable reading. So I'd like to kind of give them a little bit of a move around here. We're gonna go ahead and turn this pH meter on. We can see that we're right at 6.4. So 6.4 for a soil or soilless person would be probably perfect. Um, I want my nutrient reservoir for hydroponics to be closer to 6.2 to 5.8. Um, that seems to be the money zone between 5.8 and 6.2. So I'm going to add a little pH down and I'm going to give it another stir and then we're going to test it again um, to see if we can get it to a right around between 5.8 and 6.2 before I add it to my system. Um, you could do this inside your system. If you're running a hydroponic system, you would be doing all of this in your reservoir, in your system itself. Um, and then last, I'm going to hit my nutrient button and we're going to see what our nutrients are at. Um, so we're right at about 900, which is right around where I want to be, anywhere from 900 to 1,000. Um, and so, yeah, it's pretty much perfect. You know, got our uh, CalMag added back on there. If I was going to add anything else, I might add just a little bit more CalMag because we're growing tomatoes and they love calcium. Um, but that lets me know where I'm at, that I have a little bit of room to go one way or another with it. Um, so it came out where I wanted it. All I need to do is add a little bit of pH down to her. I'm going to take my probes out while I do that just so, you know, just so they don't shock them or anything. You don't have to, but it's a good idea. And then with my pH down, I usually use just my cap of the pH down. A lot of people like to use small pipettes. Um, and this is one of those things where you'll get better at this the more you do it. But I'm going to add a very small amount of pH down to start with. And uh, just a couple drops. And then we're going to give it a stir. And we're going to see where that got us. And you want to start really slow. Because going back up is much more of a pain than just adding a little bit more down. So just a couple drops at a time until you get really used to your the pH down that you're using and the nutrients that you're mixing, it'll start to be the same amounts every time. So with that little amount I added, I brought it down about a, a little bit of a, about a tenth. And if I give it a little bit more of a stir, it might go down one more down to 6.2. And if not, I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm just going to add a tiny bit more down. Once again, I just use the cap. But there are um, pipettes and things that you can use to get exact measurements so you can really get it perfect. But uh, usually you'll end up doing something similar to this just for speed. And because it's not bad for uh, pH to fluctuate a little bit. Not huge fluctuations, but not a terrible thing to have your pH fluctuate. A couple of ticks here and there, plants do not mind it. Still at 6.3. Add one more little shot and that should be it. So you guys get the idea. Um, this is the process of mixing nutrients. 
and adjusting pH. Um, once we've got our pH where we want it and our nutrients where we want it, we can apply it to the plants, whether that's through hand watering, um, into our reservoir, and uh, turning on our pumps to feed our systems. But these are the processes that we need to take before to make sure plants are getting the right um, mixtures. So I'm right at 6.2, which is right where I was shooting for. That seems to be the optimal zone between 6.2 and 5.8. I like it on a little bit of a higher side personally. If you were in cocoa or something like that, you might even want to go down to 5.6, 5.7. Um, it seems to be really good in cocoa mediums, but without these meters and without practice, you won't really know how your plants respond to these different numbers. So it's really good to own something like this and then to keep a tab on what you're feeding and how your plants are, res plants are responding. So got my nutrients where I want them pH where I want them, and this, this mixture can be applied to our plants. So the um, uh, process repeats itself pretty much between veg or flower and amongst a lot of different nutrient lines. Um, you want to get your schedule, follow it, monitor it, and monitor your plants and how they react. And uh, from there, you know, um, you should have some really good results and have an idea of uh, what your plants respond the best to with uh, what water you're working with and the system that you're working with. So I hope this video cleared some stuff up, made things a little bit simpler, and made you more confident for the next time you're going to mix up some food for your plants. Um, water temperature is also an issue. You want to keep your water between 68 and 72. A little cooler and a little warmer than that is obviously okay, but we're shooting for 68 to 72, and we want to make sure our water quality is you know, high. So I um, hope this video helped you guys out. All this stuff and much more is available on our website, and a lot more information. Come check us out, and we'll see you next time.